Hello everyone, let's build an ethereal spacey shader that we can apply to something like our skybox in order to create an eye-catching background. Before we get started, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you want to be notified of more content like this and leave a like if you enjoyed the video. Okay, let's get going. The way we're going to do this is we're going to create a shader uh, using shader graph, so your unlit shader, give the name spacey background. What I'm thinking is basically to have two scrolling textures uh, or two scrolling noise nodes that kind of scroll over each other. They create a randomish kind of changing gradient background. So I'm going to start off with, yeah, something like there is simple noise or the gradient noise. I'm going to go with that. And let's see here. Let's play with this valley here just to make it a bit bigger, something like this. And we need to move, have this move, yeah? So we're just gonna create a tiling and offset node, feed it in the, the UV. And now, if we change this area, okay, we don't, sorry, the offset, if we change this, we see it scroll. So let's go ahead and we want this to change over time, so we will need another node, the time node. Feed this into this, and we already kind of have a scrolling thing. Maybe we want to be able to control the speed of this, so I'm going to create a vector called speed, and I'm going to multiply this. Uh, sorry, uh, multiply the speed with our time. Give the speed a default of one so that actually moves and feed this here instead. And of course, nothing changes, but now I can change this value here to slow it down or speed it up or even make it go backwards. Um, Perfect, so we have this here. Yeah, this is not gonna be all that exciting. Um, and I said I wanna have another one of these, but that kind of goes the opposite direction, I guess, and and lay it over this one. And that'll already give me something. It'll already give me some kind of, kind of noise um, gradient pattern that moves over time. So I'm just gonna do the whole thing again, but I will now take this result here Feed into a one minus node, I think. Let's see. Tiling and offset. And into a gradient noise. Perfect, it's already going the opposite direction. You can see it's going the opposite way. But I'll also make this like a 1.14 or something like that. Yeah. If we now add these together, let's see here. Well, we need to give this whole thing a bit of color, right? Um, let's add, let me see here. Let's give this thing, this thing a color and this thing a color. I can't think of a particularly good name, so I'm just gonna call it color one. Give it a default of, let's say, I want something kind of interesting, like pink maybe, I don't know. Drop it in here. See what happens if we just multiply it with this. Yeah, that looks pretty neat. And and the other one. I'm just trying to see here. What happens if I add it? Add. Okay. Oh, that's kind of interesting. There's like a hue of pink. It's kind of cool. I actually kind of like that. It just makes the dark parts pink. Oh, I like that. Um, and what if we now multiply it with a second color? Um, color two. Give it maybe something more purplish. 
bluish maybe something like this multiply it the result of this with that well, that's kind of neat so the shade here is kind of pink and the other part is kind of purple um and we're gonna do something with this one here i'm not quite sure exactly what color to get this just yet maybe something like reddish orange kind of thing but i'm gonna i'm gonna take the same approach i'm gonna add to to give the to make the dark parts not black but have a certain color accent and then i'll multiply the result with another color to kind of give a overall colored gradient kind of thing and then we're going to overlay them on top of each other and feed them into the color and then we're going to see what happens there um so color three i guess yeah color three get this one maybe more like a red orange kind of color here let's add that very cool yeah that really just adding it really changes the color of the dark parts here and multiplying of kind of everything um now let's give it another color make this one Mm. I guess I'll give this one maybe just a darker red. Yeah, just give it a darker red here. Multiply. That's maybe a bit too, too grim looking, but let's just try it out and see. Let's move this here out of the way. Need a bit more space here. And now let's just um, multiply them together, I guess. Let's try it with multiply. Multiply. Okay, that's definitely a bit. Okay, that's very dark. I'm going to try add. Oh, that's that's what I want. Oh, that's very cool. Um, very nice. Um, let's feed that into the base color. That already looks pretty neat. Um, I'm going to apply this to a skybox real quick and, and see what that looks like. Okay, so now um, we can take our shader and we can create a material from it. Spacey background. We're going to leave the colors as they are. And now we can go into our... We're going to replace the skybox or we're going to use this material in the skybox. And so for that, we're going to go to the rendering lighting window go to the environment and in here choose our spacey background shader that did not support interesting but it still kind of works so this actually looks pretty great so it's a little weird, yeah. Um, it's telling me that it doesn't support skybox rendering, but it still kind of works, yeah. So I don't really know why it tells me this when it does work. I don't. I hope that an, uh, upon export, it's not going to be a problem. But um, I mean, the focus of this is not really so much the skybox part, but the the shader. So that's maybe something I'll have to figure out later on. Um, if anyone has an idea here, what could happen or why this is complaining about this or what needs to be done to make the shader support the skybox rendering, feel free to leave a comment um, in the section, in the comment section. Um, but yeah, this is already pretty cool. Yeah, I kind of already quite like this, to be honest. Um, it's quite trippy. It's maybe, I don't know if it's a bit repetitive. Um, we could, of course, slow it down and that'll make it way less obvious that it's repeating and it probably already pretty much kind of gets the job done yeah so this is already pretty great um pretty happy with this uh, we could take it a step further of course and um, introduce a bit more randomness to this yeah we could for instance what we could do is we can um, add some more noise to it yeah we have these voronoi cells that can move we can just scale them up a bit and 
if we also add a time node here and we feed it into the X here, I believe, yeah, they start moving around. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing again and create a second speed parameter. Give it a 0 0.2 or something default. Multiply this. Feed it into that here. Feed this into this. Okay, it's very slow. <laughs> That's maybe a bit too slow. Moving ever so slowly here. And um, we can now also, I, I don't like that these, 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 these points here are so pronounced. So I'm gonna see if I can kind of mess around with this with colors a bit. Um, let's see here. Maybe we can also actually offset the UV because they're just kind of moving back and forth a bit. I don't know if it's, if you can tell here, um, if we increase the speed a little bit and observe them, it seems like they kind of just oscillate back and forth a bit to some extent. At least individual cells kind of seem to follow a repeating path and some of them really do oscillate a bit strongly. So what I'm gonna maybe do actually is I'm gonna just maybe also offset the UV here because it can also be offset. And I'm going to take this as well and, okay, that's a bit trippy. Okay, maybe that maybe maybe we're not gonna do that part. Okay. I'm gonna leave the UV as it is. And just work with it like this. Yeah, it should should be alright. Let me let me see here. As you can see, I'm also just exploring this stuff. Yeah, I'm not super familiar with, with, with these nodes yet. Um but yeah, let's let's add some color to these as well. And um what's another color we could bring into the mix? Maybe we can just stick with the colors we have here. We can take the pink and we can add, let's try adding. That should make the black parts pink, exactly. And we can take, no, let's take maybe not this one, maybe orange and multiply. Oh, that's interesting, okay. Oh man, this looks crazy. Okay, so we have this Voronoi thing here and we can now maybe overlay it with this, yeah? So let's move this back a little bit again and let me try to add it to the output of this here. Oh, now this is cool. Very trippy, very cool. I like this a lot. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to feed it into my base color here, save the shader. Let's return back to our scene and take a look at this trippy, very trippy background here. Okay, these sides here, the edges are, yeah, of course, it's they're orange and it's, it's kind of colliding with the orange of this trippy background, but this looks very cool. I'm very into this. Um, let me give it a run here. Yeah, okay, I mean, uh, color-wise, it could be uh, optimized for sure. Yeah, the coins and everything, uh, they are, the contrast isn't quite strong enough for this, but it's definitely it definitely achieves its goal of being a trippy, ethereal background uh, for your scene. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and um, see you in the next one. Bye.